The writer strike has officially begun, and if you're a regular viewer to this channel, you might be asking, why are you talking about the writer's strike? Well, me in a hat, it turns out the strike is about AI, data transparency on streaming sites, and the future of content from major studios. Three things I talk about quite a lot on this channel. The strike has also meant that many late night TV shows are on pause, including Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel, which is why you're getting this update from what my comment section constantly calls a budget John Oliver. Let's look at why the writers are striking, what this means for your favorite TV shows, and why technology is potentially taking their jobs away. As a bit of background, you should be aware that this is the seventh time the Writers Guild of America has gone on strike. The last time they walked out was in 2007 for 100 days because of digital distribution and online streaming becoming more of a thing, and they wanted a bigger slice of that pie. Fast forward 16 years, and the current strike is also being driven by massive changes in the entertainment industry. I mean, just for a second, imagine how much TV and films have changed since 2007. Assuming, of course, you were alive in 2007, which 10% of my audience were not. And by take a second, I mean pause the video and take all the time you want, because for the sake of my retention graph, I can't sit here in silence for even a nanosecond. The main focus of this strike is streaming services, and the shift in how TV shows and films are being both produced and consumed. Because major studios refused to counteroffer what the Guild put forward, there was a strike vote. 79% of their membership voted, and 98% of them voted for a strike. Once more for the people at the back. To put that in perspective, only 62% of people voted in the last US election, and the result was 53 to 47%, depending on who you ask. When else in human history have you ever been able to get 98% of people to agree on anything. The Guild aims to make sure writing stays a profession with a living wage, and when you put it like that, it seems like a pretty fucking reasonable demand. While on strike, members can't write shows, pitch ideas, or engage in any other business activities related to TV shows, streaming services, movies, or variety shows. They can, however, reply to my email asking why they made the ending to How I Met Your Mother so goddamn awful, which means they're just actively choosing not to. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, or ABTA for short, have managed to make it harder for writers to make a living, and now are making negotiations more complex because they also represent streaming services like Netflix. The ABTA have the unenviable task of trying to find a solution which both keeps the writers happy and fits in with a bunch of different productions and distribution models. Let's start with featured films. The Guild has requested that feature films with a budget of $12 million or more released on streaming services give writers the same level of pay as a cinematic release. Now, to be fair to them, the studios did counter off at this point saying that writers could have a 9% increase in the selling price of a featured film going on streaming platforms, but only if it's more than 96 minutes long and has a budget of $40 million or more. The Guild rejected this offer, probably because studios hold the purse strings when it comes comes to budgets, and so they could, in theory, just give every new film a budget of $39 million, or only commission short films. This would be great for the TikTok consuming Gen Z who like to watch their films in 108 different parts, but not for the rest of us. Next up, mini rooms. Now, mini rooms do exactly what they say on the tin. They involve a smaller group of writers working on a proof of concept for a show with lower pay and uncertain future employment. Basically, one step up from an internship. The Guild wants to change this to reflect the current state of the streaming era. Traditionally, a TV writing gig would have a guaranteed number of episodes and months of employment, but this has been replaced by mini or development rooms. The Guild has proposed that if mini rooms are to continue, that not unlike your sex life, they must expand in both size and duration, and let newer writers into the room. I will not be taking further questions about my sex life at this time. Naturally, ABTA have said that this isn't possible, as in reality, a hiring quota is incompatible with the creative nature of our industry, which is odd because in the last few years they've been absolutely fine with some hiring quotas which make them look better, and surely this one would as well. Then we come to residuals. Now, since the dawn of time, we've known how well a TV show has done thanks to ratings. These were traditionally conducted by Nielsen, and work by counting the number of viewers over a sample of homes who have signed up to being monitored. Ah the days of consenting to being monitored. Good times. But these days, streaming sites seem reluctant to talk about their viewership data unless the show does ludicrously well. And it's pretty fucking hard to negotiate a residual if you don't even know how many people are watching the show. This would be like me walking into YouTube HQ and saying, I want a million pounds for all my top quality videos. And YouTube would say, well, not with this level of viewership. And I would reply, I can't see the level of viewership. I was basing how well it was doing on the fact that my friends and family said they watched it and loved it. And 
YouTube would say, well, your friends and family have lied to you as nobody's watched your content. And I would have to leave sad in the knowledge that not only has nobody seen my work, but also I'm not getting paid for it. I'll be honest, that one hit home a little too hard. The Guild has proposed a graduated scheme of residual payments based on the number of subscribers a streaming service has worldwide, which is great for Netflix given how many subscribers they're losing. Major studios have counter offered except Paramount Plus and HBO Max, who instead have agreed to a flat fee licensing structure. Look, I, 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 I know that's a boring paragraph, but it's important for the setup for the next bit. Basically, this could lead to viewing figures on streaming shows, or at the very least, letting writers know how many people have seen their work, which can only be a good thing. I just hope they continue to hide the number of dislikes a show gets as well, because that button is no good for anyone's mental health. And finally, artificial intelligence. Writers are concerned about the use of AI to replace human writers. Someone should do a video about this. It would do moderately well. As a result, the Guild has asked producers and studios to confirm that AI will not be used to write material or generate source material for projects created by its members, which you think would be an easy win for studios. If I bring you a killer sitcom idea, Idea, as I would. I don't expect you to take it over to chat GPT to write the episodes. I should say the producers have rejected this proposal and instead suggested we all get together every year and discuss advances in technology instead. As a result there's been talk of a super strike involving the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild and the Screen Actors Guild all coming together to create a mighty morphing Power Ranger Guild. A strike of this size would be the largest in Hollywood's history and would almost certainly lead to an exciting Netflix docuseries in a few years time. Based Basically, neither side wants to back down. On the studio side, they're claiming poverty from their expensive penthouses because it's cost them a lot of money to set up the streaming services. On the writer's side, they want job security and, much like the rest of us, to know there's a future for humans in their industry. I might be in the minority here, but I'm not loyal to a streaming platform. I am, however, loyal to shows and characters that I love. So in my humble opinion, I think the studios need the writers more than the writers need the studios. AI tends to take a bunch of data from the past to decide what to do in the future, so if I was a commissioner, I'd be on the side of the writers as AI could easily do a commissioner's job, but not so easily do the job of a writer. However, back in reality, people are constantly complaining that Hollywood has no new ideas or nothing unique to offer. And if they continue to use AI in the future, people will stop watching their streaming platforms and they'll go under anyway. But writers will always write as they're hardwired to tell stories and not just motivated by the paycheck at the end of the project. I remember enjoying Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, which was written and and released during the last strike. Given so many shows are now on pause, potentially indefinitely, people will want entertainment. Could creators, including myself, gain more attention as a result of the strike? Possibly. YouTube wasn't really a thing back in 2007, but now people can get entertainment from a billion different channels and accounts. And it has been said that creators could undermine the strike effort, as individuals in their spare room can create an entire show. I'm not sure if that's the case, but I'd love to know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Godspeed, I'll see you all next week.